On December 7, 2010, Jolly Cloud version 1.1 officially released. If you recall, a couple of months ago we took a look at Jolly Cloud version 1.0 right after it released. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will have a link in the source code below. But let's go ahead and take a look at what's different about Jolly Cloud version 1.1. So if you haven't seen the initial video about Jolly Cloud and you're not familiar with what it is, Jolly Cloud was initially designed to be a distro for netbooks. It uses a very lightweight interface, it's now HTML5 based if you couldn't tell. It has a mix of cloud apps, meaning a lot of web bookmarks, and locally installed applications. And if I hadn't mentioned it already, it is based upon Ubuntu. Now the biggest change with this version has to be that they've resynced the base to Ubuntu Lucid, Ubuntu 10.04. The previous versions, Jolly Cloud 1.0 and earlier, were all based on Ubuntu 9.04 with some patches from newer versions. Much in the same way, this is based on 10.04 and there are going to be patches from 10.10 and possibly 11.04 when that comes available. A part of that upgrade comes with kernel version 2.6.35.4, which includes faster boot up, suspend and resume times, more drivers for wireless, sound cards, video cards, webcams, all sorts of netbook specific hardware, and if you're not on a netbook, it uses the full standard kernel so you do have legacy support. So if you have an older system and the traditional Ubuntu interface is a little bit too heavy for you, this might be a good option. There are a lot of other changes under the hood, such as a newer version of GNOME that comes with the Ubuntu 10.04 base. They've added Plymouth for the boot up theme to make it look a little bit prettier. They've added the slim login manager, and there are a bunch of upgraded native apps such as VLC and Miro and things of that nature. But one of the features that I'm very interested in, and I know it's not really a big deal, up until this point you've been greeted by this sort of drab gray interface, and even before that it was a darker interface. Now they've given you this little image button in the lower right hand corner that allows you to select from a selection of pre-installed wallpapers that you can use. For example, if I were to click this one, we'll see, I believe, a spider web. yes. If we see this one, these are just community provided, I believe. You've got different backgrounds, different scenes, all of these fun things that you can select from. And if you're so inclined, if none of these really suit your style, you can go to the Your Wallpapers tab, enter an image from a URL, or even select a local up to two megabyte image. Now you'll notice here it says it will not sync anything locally with Jolly Cloud. So if you have one that's online, it will sync it, meaning every Jolly Cloud machine that you've got will use that desktop wallpaper. If you're using a local one, it's not going to take it and store it somewhere, so keep that in mind. But for now, I'll go back to the default gray wallpaper just to keep things simple. But basically, that's the majority of changes between Jolly Cloud 1.0 and 1.1. They've synced to a Lucid base, they've given you a few updated applications, they've given you the ability to change your desktop wallpaper and have that wallpaper synchronize across all of your Jolly Cloud systems. A couple of last things to mention about Jolly Cloud before we wrap things up. One, you can go into Chromium, and you can actually do this on any system as long as it has a Chrome-based browser. You go to my.jollycloud.com and give it your sign-in information, the same sign-in that you would have for Jolly Cloud. You, you get that whenever you first sign up for Jolly Cloud. And you'll notice here this looks very, very similar. It kind of looks like we're back in Jolly Cloud because the browser is running an HTML5 version of Jolly Cloud where you can go to different sites. You can't launch any of the local apps if you're on another system, but you can go to all of your links and you can add new links. You can change your different wallpapers here. I noticed earlier it didn't immediately take effect, but when I logged out and logged back in, the background version did change when I changed it within the web browser. So that's a very cool little way that you can interact with your desktop from anywhere. If you want to install new apps, if you install them here, they'll synchronize everywhere you've got Jolly Cloud installed. It's a very interesting way to get access to everything that you're going to use at a glance without having to really do any extra legwork. Now the one last thing I wanted to mention did require rebooting to a live disk because I, for the life of me, can't find a way to fully sign out of the Jolly Cloud interface. You'll see here, now we have the option to log in with Facebook. So if you do have a Facebook account and you don't already have a Jolly Cloud account, you can log in with your Facebook and just get everything up and going without having to go through an additional registration process. This is again brand new with version 1.1. So that's about all I have to say about Jolly Cloud. What do you think about it? Have you tried it before? Are you interested in trying it? Would you be interested in putting it on a netbook? Let me know in the comment section below or in a video response. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.